Hello, I am Dr. Gunamani Rava, uh, Assistant Professor of Diffu Medical College Anatomy Department. Today I am going to show about one model. This is about the development of the diaphragm and it's prepared by one group and she is the leader, Lisa Das, and she is first year student, MBBA student of our college. So she will explain about the development of the diaphragm. Yes, Lisa? Yes, sir. Okay. There are all 10 members of this group. So Lisa, explain. Hello everyone. So my topic of presentation is the development of diaphragm. So as we all know, diaphragm is a musculotendinous uh, partition between the thoracic and abdominal cavity. The diaphragm has mesodermal origin and there are four uh, mesodermal components which contribute to the formation of the diaphragm. These four components are, uh, we'll have a look at the model. The components are uh, the septum transversum, the ventral and dorsal mesentery of the esophagus okay the this one this one this one is esophagus, esophagus. okay uh, these are the ventral and dorsal mesenteries of the esophagus okay this one is uh, this one is a ventral mesentery ventral, of the and esophagus, this one is dorsal, dorsal okay uh, these two are the pleuroperitoneal membranes okay and these are the muscular muscular ingrowths from the lateral body wall the red part muscular ingrowth muscular okay so these are the four components which will take whole, no, this, this part is the back side. Uh, what, this what? part is a vertebral impression, posterior okay. body wall, this is the anterior body wall and this is the uh, vertebral impression and these are the lateral uh, body walls of the embryo. Okay. This is the uh, vena cavel opening and this is the aortic opening. Okay. That means there are three openings and mainly three openings in the diaphragm, we know it. This is the aortic, aortic. opening, vena cavel opening. And, and esophageal opening. opening. Okay. Okay. And due to posterior side. Yes. Sir. Okay. Then. Now coming to the developmental process. So uh, as we have already seen the components. So first of all, I'll be speaking about the septum transversum. The septum transversum is the unsplit part of the intraembryonic mesoderm. So uh, the septum transversum is formed during the third week of intraembryonic uh, life. Uh, intrauterine life and it is formed opposite to the cervical third, fourth and fifth somites. During the fourth week of development, the septum transversum migrates ventrocaudally to form the thick partial uh, partition between the thoracic and abdominal cavities as you can see here in this model. So this is the septum transversum. During the fourth week of development, it forms the partial partition. Now. Okay. Uh, there is, there are now I will be speaking about the mesenteries of the esophagus. The ventral margin of the esophagus is connected to the dorsal margin of the uh, septum transversum with the help of the ventral mesentery. Yes. And the dorsal margin of the esophagus is connected to the posterior body wall with the help of the dorsal mesentery. Okay. Now the ventral mesentery of the esophagus, dorsal mesentery of the esophagus and the septum transversum forms the partial partition between the thoracic and abdominal cavities. However, the thoracic and abdominal cavities are still connected to each other with the help of the pericardioperitoneal canals. These okay. are the pericardioperitoneal canals. Yes. So, for the complete partition <clears throat> between the thoracic and abdominal cavity to be formed, there is now the formation of the pleuroperitoneal folds. These are the mesodermal pleuroperitoneal folds. Yes. These pleuroperitoneal folds grows. They become thinner and forms the pleuroperitoneal membranes as you can see here. Okay. The pleuroperitoneal membranes grows towards the septum transversum and they merges with the mesentery, the dorsal and ventral mesenteries of the esophagus and also covers the entire, uh, entire septum transversum. Okay. It grows to cover the entire septum transversum and thus forms the complete partition between the thoracic and abdominal cavities. Yes. So now we, there is the formation of the complete partition. But during the 9th to 12th weeks of development, the, mm. th the pleural cavity enlarges. Now okay. for this enlarged pleural cavity, the diaphragm also needs to get enlarged. So now for the formation of this enlarged diaphragm, there is contribution from the lateral body walls. Okay. So there are muscular ingrowths from the lateral body walls. 
uh, which comes to merge to the previously formed diaphragm to form the complete diaphragm okay so this is how the formation of the diaphragm is completed now uh, the, now we'll be uh, now i'll be speaking about the embryonic uh, parts which contribute to the to some to the parts of the uh, adult diaphragm for example uh, the central tendon of the diaphragm it is formed by the septum transversum the crura of the diaphragm is formed by the dorsal mesentery of the esophagus large portions of the peripheral part of the diaphragm is formed by the muscular ingrowth from the lateral body wall and small portion of the peripheral uh, uh, small portion of the peripheral part of the diaphragm is formed by the uh, pluroperitoneal membranes so this is how the diaphragm is formed Okay, I want to ask one question. What is congenital diaphragmatic hernia? So sometimes during the development of the diaphragm, the pluroperitoneal membrane is... Let me see uh, here. Show me. Yes, this is a pluroperitoneal membrane. Okay. The pluroperitoneal membrane is sometimes deficient at some portion. Okay. Or sometimes weak at some portion. Okay. Due to which uh, some of the abdominal contents may protrude into the thoracic cavity. Okay. Forming congenital uh, congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Okay, that means it related to the only this part. Yes. Pleuroperitoneal uh, membrane. Pleuroperitoneal membrane. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Okay, that's all. This is a nice explanation about the development of the diaphragm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you.